That is known as the catch, the legendary Willie Mays making one of the most memorable plays in baseball history. An over-the-shoulder running catch in deep center field in game one of the 1954 World Series. Today, the Say Hey Kid, as he's nicknamed, turns 90 years old. He, of course, is one of the greatest ever to play the game, something he agreed with. He told Newsweek in 1979, quote, I think I was the best baseball player I ever saw. Join us now, national baseball columnist for the New York Times, Tyler Kepner, and senior writer at ESPN, Howard Bryant. Good morning to you both guys. Full disclosure, Tyler and I go way back to our freshman year working at the Vanderbilt Hustler in Nashville, Tennessee. Good to see you, TK, my man. That's right. Um, Mike Barnacle, let me put that question to you. Is Willie Mays, who turns 90 years old today, as he said, the greatest baseball player of all time? I think he is arguably the greatest baseball player of all time. Only one other baseball player threatens him. Ironically, I think it's his godson, uh, Barry Bonds. Uh, and that catch, I can remember watching that catch on a black and white TV off the bat of Vic Wirtz in the 1954 <laughs> World Series. It was, it's still stunning to see it today. Rock Wellian, too. You watched it through the window of a furniture, a furniture store. store on Main Street in Fitchburg, Massachusetts. I yeah. thought that only happened in the movies. Um, so, Tyler, let's talk about uh, Willie Mays on his 90th birthday. And for baseball fans, maybe too young to appreciate his greatness. You can look at all the numbers, but what was it about him that made him perhaps the greatest of all time? Well, it was the numbers for one thing, but also he played with a, as Bill Clinton once said in, uh, in Willie's book with John Shea, he played with a combination of greatness and joy. He exuded joy. He tried to be an entertainer as well as just a great player. You know, he tried to bring a little flair to the game. And I think he entertained fans on, on both coasts. Obviously, in the middle of his career, he went from New York to San Francisco. Um, he had fans everywhere. He played in the World Series, if you think about it, in four decades because he played in the Negro League World Series in the 40s. He played for the New York Giants in 54, San Francisco Giants in 62, and then at the very end with the Mets in 73. So he, he spanned so, so long and did it with such grace. Howard, when I think of Willie Mays, I often think of the lost possibilities that would have been involved if he had played his entire career in New York City. Of course, he didn't. The Giants moved to San Francisco. People in New York who were favored uh, Giants fans at those times still hate Horace Stoneham and Walter O'Malley for moving those clubs to the West Coast. But Willie playing in New York would have had, I think, such a larger impact, especially on young black men who uh, play baseball. And today, Major League Baseball has a real lack of uh, numbers in terms of black ball players compared to the way it was in the late 50s and early 60s. What do you think? Well, I think a couple of things. Uh, I think the first thing is is that, yeah, Willie's the, the reason why we watch. You think about what he brought to the game in terms of the joy and the energy of the sport. And also, I mean, I think that the numbers were shifting. You start looking at he, no matter where Willie played, the numbers were gonna were gonna shift the way they shifted. When I when I think about possibilities, Mike, I think about Boston. I think about the fact that we go back to Jackie Robinson and the ill fated tryout in 1945. Let's not forget that the Red Sox had first crack at Willie Mays in 1949. Yeah. So, in the city of Boston, you had a possibility. You had the chance of Ted Williams, Ooh. Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays all playing in the same city. And then in 1952, the Boston Braves signed Hank Aaron. Imagine that, all four of those guys in the same town. So Howard, what kind of star was Willie Mays? We, again, we can look at the 660 home runs. He's in the 3,000 hit club, 18-time all-star starter. But there was something bigger about him. What kind of a celebrity, what kind of a star was he in baseball in the country? Well, I think what he was is he was a Babe Ruth-level superstar in terms of the why we watch. In baseball today, we talk so much about analytics and we try to sell the game through data, through numbers, through science. This was somebody that you wanted to emulate. You wanted to be just like him. And not only did we want to be like him, the kids wanted to be like him, but his peers wanted to be like him. In 1956, Fred Haney, the manager of the Milwaukee Braves, wants to put Hank Aaron in center field. And Aaron says to his manager, I'll never make an all-star team. That's Willie's face. I think there's one other thing about it that I love, too, about Mays is that I think he's the first guy that other players wanted to emulate in terms of their number. Babe Ruth might have been the greatest player of all time, but nobody else wore number three. Think about the number of players who wore 24 just to be like him, whether it's Bonds or whether it's Ken Griffey Jr. or Ricky Henderson. All of these players 
he was the standard of why they played the game and how they wanted to play the game. Hey, Tyler, uh, you know, how I just mentioned briefly the element of save of metrics in baseball. Uh, do you think this concentration on wins against replacements, stuff like that, uh, has resulted in us watching games where it's either strikeouts or home runs, nobody hitting behind the runner, no hit and runs anymore, very few steal, stolen bases anymore. Is baseball losing the popularity of its game to sabermetrics? Well, there's something to that. I mean, if you look at the way sabermetrics, um, you know, uh, spreads things out, it's like, well, you know, I hit, hit a home run. That's the most valuable play you can do. So that leads to a lot of strikeouts. But it's, it's a little more complicated than that. Uh, pitchers right now are just so good at dictating the action and making the ball do crazy things. The hitters just think, you know what, I'm not going to score a run with three singles. Let's just try to hit one out of the park. And that makes the strikeouts um, even more. So it, it's getting to be a game, and it's still a wonderful game, but there are fewer hits than ever and more strikeouts than ever. So that means fewer balls in play, and that means less chance for the exciting kind of plays that we would see with Willie Mays and the chance for players to show that all-around game. That's one thing baseball is really trying hard to bring back is some of those all-around skills that we can see and not just a power competition of throw it by the batter or hit it over the fence. Tyler, before we let you go, we've got to talk a little current baseball. AL East, because that's what we do here in Morning Joe. we got the Boston fan to my right here. I'm a Yankee fan. As you know, Yankees are hot right now. They're pitching well. They're starting to swing the bats a little bit. How's that division going to shake out? Well, I, I can't see Boston sustaining this. Um, it's still kind of a transition year for them. Uh, it's probably going to come down to the Yankees and the Rays. You know, the Rays always kind of figure out a way to, to do things differently. Um, they're right there in the middle of it right now. Um, Baltimore's off to a nice start. You showed the no-hitter last night. Um, but I think it's still probably the Yankees' division to take, but you can never discount those Rays. They figure out a way just about every night to make life miserable. So your fatalism and Joe's fatalism about the Red Sox <laughs> appears well-placed, Mike Barnacle. Alex Cora, that's the secret to the Red Sox' success. Trust me on that. Alex Cora will have a minute all summer. All right, we'll see. Tyler, great to see you, my friend. By the way, Tyler was a great boss, a great editor. <laughs> ran the sports section at Vanderbilt Hustler, then ran the whole darn paper. He's the man. What about Howard Bryant speaking the truth and making <laughs> me cry on TV? <laughs> he got you there, didn't he? <laughs> Tyler, Howard, great to have you along for this conversation, and a very happy birthday to Willie Mays, born on this day 90 years ago. Hey, thanks so much for watching our YouTube channel. You can follow up on today's top stories and breaking news or catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.